All right, let's do another example of annuities. Let's look at example 9.3.4. All right, Camilla is offered an investment opportunity. For $55,000, she would get $500 per month every month starting on November 1st, 2021 until the last payment on October 1st, 2041. Assume that she buys this investment and invests everything at an interest of 10% compounded monthly. All right, so everything that she gets, every $500 that she gets, she all um, immediately puts it in an account that gives her 10% interest rate compounded monthly. How much money will be in the investment on November 1st, 2041? All right, so we want to know what's going on November 1st, 2041 we start putting um, money in the bank account November 1st, 2021. So we have our first $500. We invest it for how many months? So it's 20 years. So 20 times 12, that's 240 months. So at the end, that $500 will have become we have an interest rate of 10 monthly and then 240 months all right so that's the first payment second payment december 1st 2021 another 500 dollars that one oh sorry will be invested for one month less and so we'll incur a bit less interest all right and so on until the last payment is october 1st 2041 so that's the last 500 dollars um, it's only in the account for one month and so we'll not gain as much interest as the first few of course but it would still gain some interest because it's there from october 1st to november 1st all right so let's add them all up so she will have um, i like to start from the smaller and so up and then at the back i have 500 1 plus 0 1 12 239 all right so i started here added this one I need to add this one as well so 500 1 plus 0 1 12 to 40 all right so we have a ratio it's always pretty much the same because every month we multiply it by this extra and so the ratio is equal to 1 plus 0.1 on 12 so the formula tells us that this is equal to 500, so that's the first 1 plus 0 0.1 on 12, minus the next would be 500, 1 plus 0 0.1 on 12, 241, over 1 minus the ratio, minus 1 .01 200, no, 212. All right, so let's put that in a calculator. So I will get 500, 1 plus 0.1 on 12, um, minus 500 times 1 plus 0.1 on 12, 241. And then I'm gonna divide all of this. Don't forget the parentheses here. By one minus 1 plus 0.1 on 12. All right, so let's see if what I got makes sense. I got uh, 382,848 and 43 bucks. All right, so I need to figure out whether she should invest or not that's the next question should she buy this investment 
um, she's asked to pay 55,000 for it. So at first glance, it looks like a good deal because she starts with 55,000 and ends up with 382,000. The problem is the 55,000 she needs to pay here on November 1st. The 382,000 she would get over here. So I can't really compare the two because you can think of it as inflation or um, the money here is not worth the same as the money there. And so what I need to do is either take that 55,000 and bring it to November 1st, 2041, or bring this one back. So let's bring the 55,000 forward. So if she just invests the money, in the bank account. So she doesn't need to put every $500 in the bank account. She could just take the 55,000, not buy the investment and put that 55 in the bank at the same interest rate. She has this account. All right, so how much would she get? So 55,000, I have one point uh, 0 0.1 over 12. How many months do we have in 20 years? We have 240 months. All right, so this is how much she would have if she just invested the money, period. So she would end up with 400, actually, probably not an exact number. So that one I could include ahead of time just to save a bit of time, uh, 044 and 05. And so if she buys investment, she would get $382,000 in the bank account. If she actually just invests the $55,000, um, bypasses this investment, she would end up with $403,044 and five. So she should not buy the investment. She should just put the 55K in the bank. All right, so this says that the $55,000 is not the right price for this investment. This is not how much the invest investment is worth. So here's question C, what would be a fair price for this investment? So really, we have this 382,000. That's how much money you have here. In this case, we don't have a choice. We're asked for how much this is worth today. So we need to bring it back to today. So that's P, that, let's say P is the fair price. Fair price, I would need P 1 plus 0 0.112 to 40 to be worth that amount that I have in the account in the end. So that's much how much this investment is worth in today's money. So P would be 382.848 and 43 divided by 1 plus 0 0.1 over 12 to 40 and uh, let's see what we get. So this amount that we already computed, I want to divide it by 1 plus 0.1 divided by 12 to the 240. And so we get 52,244 and eight cents. This is the fair price. All right, good. All right, so I want to take this idea that we just use of bringing the worth of something, either the 55K that lives over here, bringing it to the future, or taking the 382K that we have in the future and bringing it to the present to see how much it's worth in today's money 
in future money. And so that's what we do in the following definition. All right, definition 9.3.1, future and present value. Assume that we have access to an interest rate of R compounded M times a year. We wish to study the value of a certain investment scheme that ends in two years. The future value, FV of the investment, is the amount of money that will be in the account in T years. All right, so that's how much money will actually be in the account. So this is a very concrete number. In the last example, the future value would be this $382,000. The present value is a bit more abstract. So the present value of the investment is the amount of money that you would have to invest, um, I want to say today, in an account with an interest rate of R compounded M times a year to end up with F of V in T years. So this is how much money you should start with to end up with the future value. So this here is present value, and this is future value, right? Future value lives here, present value lives here. All right, a similar definition works for continuously compounded interest rates. So here, whatever type of interest you replace here, I just chose um, this one because that's the one that we use most often in this section, but it works just as well with uh, continuously compounded. All right, so note that the future value, well, you start with present value and you invest it in that account for two years. So one plus R over M because it's M times a year, uh, and then T times M. All right. In the past, we've taken M to be 12, but it could be weekly, which would mean 52. It could be um, yearly, which would mean M equals 1. And so if I solve for PV, I need to send this to the other side. And so I will get a negative exponent. You could also just divide by it if you think that'd be better. All right, final example. Assume that Roberto is offered an investment which will give him 1500 a month forever all right so this is 1500 a month in 20 years and 40 years and 50 years and a thousand years forever assume that he has access to an account where the interest rate of five percent is compounded monthly what is the maximum amount of money that he should pay for this investment all right so we have a payment uh, 1500 a month. Uh, we have an interest rate of 0 0.05. We compound monthly. And we're asked for how much uh, it's worth now. And so we want the present value. All right, so let's make our diagram. So this is today, and now the diagram goes on forever. Okay, bit crazy, but it works. Um, so he gets $1,500 today. He gets, so that's worth today $1,500. He gets $15 in a month. Now, that's $1,500 in a month. That's not worth $1,500 today. That's worth less, right? Because if I had that $1,500 today, I could invest it. I would have more than that in a month. So in fact, I need to bring it back to today's using this. So that's going to be, um, let me make it a bit big. Uh, so that's going to be $1,500. And then I'll multiply by 1 plus 5%, uh, so 0, 0,5 on 12. And month is one, so one month back. All right, so back means minus 1 here. All right, so let's put it a bit further. Two months later, he gets another $1,500. 
I need to bring it back on time two months. And so that one is worth even less. And so on and so forth. All right, so every amount, every payment will be worth less than the one before because we need to bring it back one month further. And so the present value, the value today would be the sum of this. So it's 1500 plus 1500, one plus 0.05 on 12, plus 1500, one plus 0.05 on 12 to the minus two, and so on. Notice that at every step, I multiply by one plus 0 0.05 over 12 minus one because I'm pulling the amount back a month more than the one before. All right, same thing here. And so I have, I have an infinite sum. So I have a series. Uh, the series has ratio R, which is this. Um, let me compute what it is because I need to make sure the series is convergent. So we have one plus 0 0.05 on 12, that's about 1.004. So if I take one over that, R, I mean, it's pretty close to zero, uh, to one, but it is less than one. It is in minus one to one. So the series is convergent. This geometric series is convergent. And so it will converge to first over one minus ratio. So it will converge to 1500 one minus, and I can't use this, I want to use the exact value, so I'm going to use this, the one plus 0 0.05 on 12 minus one. Um, let me compute it again. So I get 1500 over uh, this, so one minus parentheses, one plus 0 0.05 divided by 12, close the parentheses to the minus one. All right, so what I get is 361,499.97 cents. Again, round to two, degree, two decimals because we're talking about money, so we're talking about cents, but only at the very end. You keep the exact values everywhere until the very end when you plug it into your calculator and you get the amount. All right, so this is interesting. It would feel like such an investment would be worth everything you had. Well, it's not worth as much as my intuition would tell me because the inflation would mean that the payments are worth less and less and less as we go along. In fact, my granddad bought such an investment when he was, when my parents, my, when my dad was young, and he bought an investment like that that would give us a big chunk of money, he thought, when he died. But it turned out that with inflation, we got about 100 bucks when he died. And so it's completely negligible. And it's the same thing here. The money that you make today, if you just leave it uh, alone, it's not going to be worth much later on. And so that $1,500 a month, which is nice now, will be worth almost nothing down the road. All right, that's it.